enriching moment in the morning, it will be difficult to summarize everything. Uh, for my closing remarks, um, I, I would like to draw attention to a few things and make a few uh, comments. First, to us as Nigerians, in 2013, I gave a TEDx talk on confronting the fear of vested interests. The prophet said that my people will be destroyed by two things. The love of the material things of this world and the fear of death. And the truth is, these two things are at the heart of all the problems we have in Nigeria. People do not want to stand up and speak the truth. Either because they are afraid of what will happen to them, or because they crave some material benefit they think they're going to miss. And in a sense, we have all behaved like children who are not well brought up and who don't have a sense of our personal dignity and who do not use our intelligence. Everything in this world is transient. And if we just remember that no matter how much money you have, there's a limited amount of food you can eat. If you have 100 houses, you sleep on one bed in a night. If you have 100 cars, you can be in only one at a time. And when you die, you will be buried alone. If you think about that, you ask yourself if any amount of money is worth giving up your dignity as a human being. And that dignity is not just yours. When your fellow Nigerian does not have dignity, it is you as a person because you can be in that place. The same thing with fear. People are afraid of losing what they have. They are afraid of losing status, losing position. I remember, and I'm sure all of us have experienced when you confront authority, people closest to you come and tell you, be careful. These people are dangerous. They will destroy you. Why would anyone think any human being can destroy you? And at the end of the day, in what in what cause? I remember in the middle of my crisis, I got called from friends. A, a senator called me and said, you know, you can't fight government. Government will destroy you. I said, no, government will not destroy me. That's at the end of the day, you know, you this job, central bank, I will leave it one way or the other. I will die. My term, my term will expire. I'll be sacked. I have no control over that. But I have a control over how I live. I wasn't surprised with my suspension. I knew it would happen because I had been called and asked to resign and I said no and I had been told I would leave. So I knew it would happen. But, but I was not going to make it easy for anyone by resigning. You know, you want to get it out, do it the hard way. And my answer was simple. You ask me to resign for telling you money has been stolen. Ask the minister first to resign. It's just a matter of principle. If you tell her to resign, then say you to resign, I'm investigating you, that's fine. And you know, I think for most of us Nigerians, we, we just get too carried away by this fear that you're going to lose position. And you forget that the person that you're looking at, whether it's the president or the governor, he is himself holding on to a transient position. All the people that when people were afraid of two, three years ago, where are they today? And, and I say this, and the people that today, today are afraid of speaking the truth. Just remember that in another five years, many of those you are afraid of will not be where they are. It's transient. And for those who are in power, Remember that it's transient, and at the end of the day, the only thing that will matter is what you did for the people while you were there. If you were a governor, or a president, or a minister, or a governor of central bank, no one remembers you for how much money you had. You, you, look, people talk about Dangote, he has money. You will never be Dangote. 
you will not be on the Forbes list for the same reason that you cannot even, even if you are switched as Dangote, you cannot even announce it. So you will never be on the Forbes list. You will be denied. Okay. okay, so you will never be remembered for wealth, but you can be remembered for service. And there are many people who left nothing in this world but service, and that is what people are remembering them for. So I, for me, I think this is what I would like us to share with our friends, to share with our children, and to share with those in power. Power is transient. People get carried away. In my system, the traditional system, we're very different from the modern system. In the modern system, people are surrounded by psychophants. People tell them the world shines out of their back. We have them in the palace, we call them praise singers. We know, we know, they're praise singers, it's their job to tell you that you came down from the sun. Your father, your brother, like you will rule forever, you will never die. You listen to them, you know, they tell that that's, that's their job. You don't ask them to advise you on monetary policy. <laughs> He's a praise singer. Someone is supposed to advise you. He's a praise singer. Someone is supposed to be a law enforcement agent. He's a praise singer. And you're happy. And, you know, I feel sorry for people in power because they're surrounded by their enemies. In the tradition system, we have something called a king's fool. Wawasaki. The idea of the fool is somebody who will face the king. I tell you, don't listen to these people telling you people are hungry. You think people like you, they are abusing you. That is what you listen to. In our system, you're looking for people who will tell you where you go wrong. In the system that we have politically, if anybody tells you you should correct this, it's your enemy. And you believe them. Look at Jonathan today. I opened the papers, people are abusing me. These same people, when he was in power, stood up and defended him. And people say to me, why aren't you blaming Jonathan? I said, I blamed, I criticized Jonathan when he had power. There is no interest for me to attack him after he has gone. He is no longer the president of Nigeria. If you want to get through Nigeria, look at the present government and tell them what they're going wrong. That's when I'm impressed. country where every time somebody is in power, everything he does is right, nobody will tell him the truth, then the day he leaves, he has become a complete devil, <laughs> and the people, the very people who were part of the previous regime, reinvent themselves and we forget the gratuitous insult of some people getting up today to present themselves as the revolutionaries of Nigeria. It's an insult to all the people who fought against corruption. I think when we talk about the rule of law, I keep saying it's about the human beings. Our sense of dignity as citizens, our sense of dignity as leaders, what kind of name we want to leave behind, what country we want to have, we are part of what we see. I mean, politi politicians come into, you've got smart ones, you've got someone not smart. Donald Trump, George Bush, they know what's idea of a genius. But the system and the people that they're ruling have said that we will not be reduced to a certain And he says, I don't want to jab. American women go answer when I'm a Muslim. Because if you victimize an American Muslim, you victimize every American woman. And therefore they say we are all Muslims. And this is what dignity is about. If you destroy one Nigerian, you've destroyed all of us. If you say a Nigerian life has no value, my life has no value. If private property has no value, my private property has no value. Because it's just a matter of time to come round and come round to us. So uh, with these are uh, for me, uh, what I take from everything that's been discussed, and I must say, uh, listening to her ladyship and the side of the judiciary is an eye opener for This lecture
and great to be to um, Mr. Shafola and of course um, Kaede and the, and the family. Congratulations for organizing this. I will now invite Mr. Kaede.